last day of the regular season, the defending champs, the Loyola Ramblers, in hostile territory facing the Panthers of Northern Iowa. Alongside Kevin Lehman on Clay Mathic, we are ready to go. Rowan Simmons, Kevin Driver, and Dave Cusick, the officiating crew, and the opening con tip is controlled by the Panthers of Northern Iowa. Carter needs a big game for the Panthers. And he starts out with the first two. He was held to just two points the last time these two teams got together. They got physical with Carter off first blood. Williamson, Norris, Knight, Hall, and Ukwok, the starting five for the Ramblers. And we're going to get an offensive foul on Chris Knight. Well, essentially a traveling call. Good recovery by Carter as Knight had excellent post position on that opening play for the Ramblers. Heisey, Pickford, Green, Burhau, and Noah Carter, the starting five for Northern Iowa. On the last day of the regular season, the defending champs, the Loyola Ramblers, in hostile territory facing the Panthers of Northern Iowa. Alongside Kevin Lehman on Clay Mathic, we are ready to go. Rowan Simmons, Kevin Driver, and Dave Cusick, the officiating crew, and the opening tip is controlled by the Panthers of Northern Iowa. Carter needs a big game for the Panthers. And he starts out with the first two. He was held to just two points the last time these two teams got together. They got physical with Carter off first blood. Williamson, Norris, Knight, Hall, and Ukwok, the starting five for the Ramblers. And we're going to get an offensive foul on Chris Knight. Well, essentially a traveling call. Good recovery by Carter as Knight had excellent post position on that opening play for the Ramblers. Heisey, Pickford, Green, Burhau, and Noah Carter, the starting five for Northern Iowa. Green, nice turnaround, fade away, 4-0 Northern Iowa. They got the switch they wanted. Norris on to A.J. Green. He's got that patented baseline fade away. Norris tonight, and the Dartmouth transfer is on the board. Great pocket pass by Norris, and Knight with those soft hands takes it to the rim quick. Green is fouled, and he's going to shoot three. So here are the standings in the Missouri Valley Conference. The winner of this game will be the regular season champ and get the number one seed for the Valley Tournament in St. Louis, which starts on Thursday. It's been a season of overtimes, one possession games, and it all comes down to this play. It's a winner-take-all, 40 minutes here at the McLeod Center. Somebody's going to go home with a trophy. Reigning player of the week in the Missouri Valley, A.J. Green. Gets the first two, has another one coming. Well, Lucas, look at Lucas Williamson came over the top of that screen and bumped him. Pickford with pressure on Norris. They like to put Pickford on the point guard and take away the flow and rhythm of the Ramblers. Two turnovers for Loyola already early in this game. 7 2 Northern Iowa. Here's A.J. Green. He'll rise up and hit. He had 18 in the first half when they played in Rogers Park. Did not get a field goal in the second half. He's a guy that could be back next year for Northern Iowa. It's unlikely. In fact, he's going to be honored this weekend as one of the four seniors as Williamson drives in. And that's going to be... A continuation foul, so Lucas Williamson with a chance at a three-point play. Strong move for what on green. Yeah. 
It's Loyola team, Kevin, blowtorch Northern Iowa on Super Bowl Sunday, 85-58. They shot 64%, hit 14 threes in the game. That's something that they've got to have go their way again today, hitting from the outside. Hit five threes in the first six minutes of that game. Pickford trying to tip it in off the quarter miss. Here comes Ugwak for Loyola. Catch and shoot, Williamson. Tipped out, and Norris will keep it alive. Williamson, deep three. That time he got it. Excellent ball move by the Ramblers. Second chance opportunities on that tip out. They could get matched up. Step in three ball for Williamson. Williamson, the career leader in games played at Loyola. His last regular season game with the Ramblers for the first time. Here's Chris Knight bouncing off of Carter and left it short. Good wall up by Carter on Knight. No second defender. Carter's going to handle him all by himself inside, and that is a tough task for Chris Knight. Heisey, the turnaround right hand. He's had a great second year in the league. Misses on that attempt. All freshman team last year for Heisey. And now A.J. Green picks up the foul. And Ben Jacobson's going to go to his bench. So Green picked up his second foul. And Green's going to reluctantly take a seat on the bench. Drew Valentine, the youngest head coach in the country at 30 years old. Not a bad debut. He could be 40 minutes away from a championship. Randler's trying to pick up their fourth title in five years. It would be Drew's first. He got the other three as an assistant. Williamson has it stolen away by Titan Anderson, who's been a spark off the bench for the Panthers this year. Three ball off the bench. We were talking with Ben Jacobson earlier today, Kevin, and he thinks he should be the sixth man of the year in this league. Well, I agree. No one has played better off the bench in this month of February than Bowen Barn. Norris misses. Long rebound out to Williamson. He's strong off the heel. But they've changed some of the things to play that they're doing defensively, especially on the ball screens for the Panthers. Horn drives and finishes. And Loyola wants a timeout. Great start for Northern Iowa at home. Winner take all today in the Valley. Got crypto brain? You could satisfy it by getting crypto the same way everyone else does. Or with a tax advantage at Alto Crypto IRA. With as little as 10 bucks, you can now put retirement dollars in crypto. Over 125 coins through Coinbase Exchange, including Bitcoin, all with the full tax advantages of an IRA. Everyone's got their eye on crypto. Get yours with the Alto Advantage. Sign up free at altoira.com slash crypto. Hi, folks. Medicare Part C plans with extra benefits like... Oh, and porn. Three ball off the bench. We were talking with Ben Jacobson earlier today, Kevin, and he thinks he should be the sixth man of the year in this league. Well, I agree. No one has played better off the bench in this month of February than Bowen Barn. This doesn't look like the same Northern Iowa team that got blitzed in Chicago a couple of weeks ago. Norris misses. Long rebound out to Williamson. He's strong off the heel. They've changed some of the things to play that they're doing defensively, especially on the ball screens for the Panthers. Horn drives and finishes. And Loyola wants a timeout. Great start for North 2020 with a healthy A.J. Green. Well, turnovers were a big storyline in the first meeting between these two teams. There were too many for Northern Iowa, and Loyola turned them into points. This time so far, Loyola, though, three turnovers has led to seven Northern Iowa points, so the script has been flipped a little bit from 13 days ago. Well, we knew these teams would make some adjustments in these last 13 days. 
Tom Welch down into the game for Loyola, number 10. Five on the shot clock, Williamson. That's going to be a turnover. Welch, the ball screen up high, feet too wide. He's trying to get an explanation from the official, from Dave Pusick. Last of four games in eight days for Loyola. But they blew out Evansville by 51 on Wednesday. Many of the starters took most of the night off. And Bowen Bourne is giving Ben Jacobson great minutes here early. Well, in his last two games, he's had a total of 30 points for Bowen Bourne. He has been dynamite off the bench for the Panthers. And the assist from Austin Pike. Here's the Ivy League transfer, Schwieger, driving the baseline. Ryan Schwieger, who played at Princeton before landing at Loyola, has his first two. Iso play on the right side for Schwieger. Now they're going to trap Bourne. Tipped into the backcourt. Welch dives on the floor. And it's going to be a jump ball favoring Loyola. That's what you expect in the final game of the regular season with a title on the line. 50-50 well, balls are huge when you're trying to win championships. They trap Bourne, knocked it loose. Welch on the floor first. Bourne gets on top. Tie up. Ball goes to Loyola. Maybe those extra possessions. Loyola can finish one through four in the Missouri Valley. Northern Iowa one through three. That's how much is at stake. Fans wanted to travel, didn't get it. Again, Loyola tips the ball out. Second chance opportunities. Welch spins it out. Schwieger for three. Yes, it rattles home. Schwieger's been in a slump, but he is out of it today. Five points for Schwieger. You see, Bourne has scored the last seven for the Panthers. He's running the point. Here's Anderson, and he throws it away. Tate Hall quickly into the forecourt. Williamson way off the mark. And Burhau, the easy backside rebound. And both these teams will try to get shots up in transition before the defense gets set. The super senior Burhau creating. One of four players again being honored today. He has had a great Northern Iowa career. Burhau has got 211 career threes. For the Panthers. Paul, nice pocket pass to Welch. Welch has come off the bench and made a huge difference for the Ramblers. Boy, Drew Valentine couldn't say enough about how much Welch has improved. Well, we've seen him up close and personal. It's a 7 0 Loyola run. Carter. Good adjustment to get the shot off, but not strong enough. Still a bit off balance as that double started coming in left. Williamson hopping between a couple of defenders, and he's thrown to the floor. Second chance opportunity. There's turn in the corner. Welch on the rim dive. Help defender cannot get there. Now, they really hurt the Panthers when they played in Gentile Arena with that high pick and roll. And last foul on Titan Anderson, his first. Three fouls now on Northern Iowa as a team. Clemens is going to try a three. And line drive approach doesn't pan out. Out of bounds to Northern Iowa. Media timeout here at the McLeod Center. It's a one-point lead for Northern Iowa. Pick up Belmont, Murray State, and UIC. 16-15 Northern Iowa with the lead and the ball. Antoine Kimmins checks in to run the point, number 22, the sophomore out of Oakdale, Minnesota. Noah Carter, left hand, doesn't get the bounce. Tipped up and in by Taiwan Pickford. The Missouri Valley's active leader in career rebounds, and he gets the stick back. He has been sensational in the offensive glass. His man goes a double team. Pickford goes to the window. 
tips it back in for the Panthers. This is 142nd career game today. And Ben Jacobson, his game is somewhat like Draymond Green. He's not guarded, so he's learned how to play and go ball screen. Now you see Loyola with a tip in by Ugua. The Canadian with his first two. Drew Valentine says he's the glue of this team as Carter with a step back three. He missed a couple in close, so he takes a shot from downtown and hits. That's why he's so dangerous because he can score in the block, he can get the three. Oh, now and he Knight. Can make a defensive play for the Panthers. Knight called for the offensive foul. He had a tough day at the office when these two teams met in Loyola. Noah Carter is ready to go at today. Defensively, he takes the body bruise, draws the charge against Chris Knight. Both teams getting good bench play here in the first half. Two teams' benches have combined for the last 14 points in this game. Shot clock under 10 for Kimmons. Kimmons rises up. High arching shot and he hits. He is the energy guy off the bench for the Panthers. Kimmons did not play in their game at Indiana State. And now Schwieger is fouled by Kimmons. 10.04 to go here in the first half. Sold out crowd here at the McLeod Center, and here's our NBA Saturday primetime matchup. John Marks left the door open Tuesday for KD and Ben Simmons possibly playing in this one. Joining Kyrie, they'll be in Milwaukee to take on Giannis and the Bucks. Coverage begins with NBA Countdown, 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific on ABC and the ESPN app. Norris off the front iron. Here comes Northern Iowa leading by six. Carter made his mind up, and no one was going to stop him, Kevin. Got the three-point line. Knight trying to recover to take away the three. Carter with the shot fake, the bounce, and Ben Jacobs has told us. Carter got roughed up against Drake the first time, responding the second time with 23 games. He expected the same today. Another Loyola turnover as Northern Iowa has cranked up a 7-0 run. Noah Carter is playing like he's got three lungs. First winner take all game for the Valley regular season title in seven years when Wichita State was still in the league. They beat Northern Iowa in Wichita in that game. Well, the Ramblers was a, a token three quarter court pressure trying to take Northern Iowa out of rhythm. Can he do it again? You betcha. That was from the Unidome. And now Bourne is fouled. Kick back to Carter. Step in three ball, nothing but nylon for number 35. Carter's already got 10. Burhau's going to come back in. Heisey's going to sit down. Seven turnovers already here in the half for Loyola. It's been a much more aggressive defense for the Panthers than we saw two weeks ago. Aggressive on the ball screens. Carter has it poked away. So no over and back. Shot clock. Burhau. Deep three. Maybe rushed it a little bit. Schwieger found a seam and he's fouled. Now Ryan Schwieger. Attacking. It's fouled by Kimmons. Schwieger's given 
the, pan, the Ramblers a real lift off the bench. That time, Northern Iowa did not back in transition, did not get matched up. Miscommunication puts Schwiger, an excellent free throw shooter, at the line. Both teams good at the foul line. Loyola 72 percent as a team. Loyola trying to win its fourth Valley regular season title in the last five years. Northern Iowa trying to win their second in three seasons. You see the winner take all games in Valley history. There haven't been many in the last 40 years. Missed that Wichita State defeats Northern Iowa at Wichita. Now full court pressure from Loyola is they're really trying to disrupt the flow of Northern Iowa. This is about playing with rhythm, Clay. Both these teams are a rhythm offensive team. Got to take them out of the rhythm. Austin Fife in the game now. Kimmins was trying to get a pass to Fife, and then he camped out in the lane too long, and it's a Northern Iowa turnover. So we'll see how many minutes Austin Fife can give Ben Jacobson today. He has been highly efficient. We've been getting eight to 12 minutes a game from Austin Fife. And he's been efficient in those short minutes. Had a bout with COVID earlier in the year. It really affected him. Hasn't been a starter since January 2nd. Schwieger tracks it down. Williamson wide open on the wing. Banks it in, Lucas Williamson. That was off the window for Williamson. One area has really improved, and he's, he's got the smile. I know he's one of your candidates for player of the year in this league. Oh, no question. Lucas Williamson, last year's defensive player of the year. He is on the list for player of the year. He's improved his offensive game tremendously. Cameron Crutwig went to Belgium. This has become Lucas Williamson's team. Now Fife is mugged going to the rack. 7.20 to go here in the first half. The lead has been cut to six. Well, Williamson this year, he's shooting over 40% from three. That one, he... he's been very, very good. But he's playing himself into a spot on first team all league in the Valley. you got to give him some consideration. League play has been playing at a different level for the Panthers. Austin Fife at the line. It's been a tough year for the big man physically. We talked about his bout with COVID. When Fife is in, Loyola is going to want to play as fast as they possibly can, according to Drew Valentine. And they brought Hudson in, their third post player. They have a three-headed monster, Loyola, with Knight and Hudson and Welch at that five spot. Williamson floats it up and in. So Williamson, the first Rambler in double figures. Nice touch by Williamson. He's knocked into three. He's been driving into the heart of the defense of Northern Iowa. A.J. Green back in the game. Miss that mid-range jumper from the lane. Deep three. Four, nice pass. And a good finish by Heisey. That's the way the Panthers want to play. They want to get out in space. The ball in Bowen Bourne's hands. He can score it or dish it. Inside, and Hudson gets bumped. He'll go to the line. Now, this is a Northern Iowa team. In their last two games, they have scored 88 points and 95 points and that's how they do it they go that small lineup with Bourne in there spread the court and even Drew Valentine said they are hard to match in transition when Bowen Bourne is in the game 16 sophomore Jacob Hudson is at the line one of the three post players that Loyola has used this year since Cam Frontwick turned pro those three post players that I mentioned, Hudson, Knight, and Welch had 19 points and 11 rebounds in this first meeting. They followed up with 30 and 10 at Valpo. I call him the three-headed monster. And you got A.J. Green playing there, Clay. He's got two fouls. 
See who they match him up with the defensive end, or Loyola tries to take advantage to get the third. Green found Heisey all alone in the corner. Great pass after he got the double team. That's the thing about A.J. Green. Even when he's not scoring, he creates for others. Burhau batting it away. Good hustle by Northern Iowa. Loyola will keep it. Well, our final big Monday doubleheader of the regular season. The Bayheim brothers lead Syracuse against Armando Baycott in North Carolina at the Dean Smith Center at 7. That's a big one in the Big 12. Baylor in Austin to take on number 20, Texas. Both games are on ESPN and the app. And North Carolina is one of those bubble teams you want to keep an eye on. Uh, Lagardi has it the last four buys for the Tar Heels. Tom Welch with that foul. The Bayheim brothers are averaging 32 between the two of them, Buddy and Jimmy. Knight's going to check back in. Welch will sit down. Each team with six fouls, so both teams at the line. The rest of the half. Northern Iowa, one of the hottest teams in the league over the last month, They've won eight of their last nine. They have not trailed in this game. Carter backing down Ugwak. Got it. And one. He is the hot hand, and the Panthers are going to him. A.J. Green's on the bench with two fouls. They're going to number 35, Let him go to work in the block. Baker's dozen for Noah Carter here in the first half. And what did Ben Jackson tell us? He does not come back with a poor game against the same opponent. He told us, keep an eye on Noah Carter. He's going to be ready to play today. Schwinger trying to shush the crowd. Hits a three. His second in the first frame. He's given a huge lift. Now, we know Schwinger can score points. He had 24 in that big win when they played San Francisco in Salt Lake City. Trey Burhau to Pickford. Boy, great teamwork there from the two veterans. Thread the needle. Boy, he is one of the toughest players in this league, the junior Braden Norris. One of the most underrated guards in the Valley. Norris. That's out of bounds. And it's going to belong to Loyola. We were talking with Drew Valentine at the shoot-around this morning about Braden Norris. Of course, uh, the transfer from Oakland, that's where Valentine played his college ball. He said Notre Dame wanted Braden Norris really bad. He ended up at Oakland. He lands at Loyola. And it's been a great marriage. Valentine just loves his point guard. Schwieger again. Somebody threw a bucket of water on the Ivy League transfer. Loyola has had tremendous success with their transfers. It goes back to Clayton Custer, Marcus Towns, both Larry Bird MVPs, and now we've got Knight and Schwiger, the Ivy League transfers. Carter from the free throw line. He is on fire himself. Going to put his hand in a bucket of water. He's having an out-of-body experience for Noah Carter. You know he had a pretty good crowd shot after that game two weeks ago. Trying to make up for it. Norris finds Ugwak out of bounds. Last touch by the Panthers with 3.28 to go in the half. We got a timeout here in Cedar Falls. It's made all the difference for Northern Iowa. And so many guys returned for Drew Valentine's Loyola Ramblers that you kind of saw that these two could be the best teams in this league at the end of the regular season. Now Cameron Crutwig departs early. But the four super seniors decided to come back and they add those two transfers in Schwiger and Knight. The Loyola team with tremendous depth and ability to score from a number of positions. Norris with two on the shot clock, got the triple. When they need a basket. Braden Norris delivers for the Ramblers. 
He's got the best three-point percentage in the Valley at 43%. And he's always played well against Northern Iowa. Norris is 8 of 13 from distance in his games against the Panthers. Ramblers can tie it with the three. They've trailed from the outset. Williamson. Carter fouled by Lucas on the back. And Noah Carter will go to the line with 239 to play in the half. And that's the second on Lucas Williamson. So we have the best defender in the league is going to go to the bench with two. A.J. Green back on the court for the Panthers with two fouls. There's A.J. Green. He's going to go back to the bench for Northern Iowa. And he's not used to sitting over there 36 minutes per game. That's tops in the valley. He didn't like it over there either. <laughs> can guarantee that. As much great offense that we've seen out of the Panthers. The Ramblers hanging around here. Four points down. Now five. Schwiger has been tremendous off the bench for Loyola. 17 now for Noah Carter. That leads everybody. And the winner of this game will be the champion in the Missouri Valley Conference for the regular season and have that number one seed at Arch Madness in St. Louis. Right hand hook. For Chris Knight, for Loyola. That was a great set play by Drew Valentine, the high, ho, high low look. They knew they had a guard Schwieger out there. Strong post up by Knight on Carter. Carter from the baseline. Boy, you can just see the confidence as he comes back down the court. Tate Hall for three, you bet. Well, is a barrage of threes. St. Hall, 47% from three in conference play. Bourne can't believe that didn't go down. Loyola can take the lead. But they'll tie it on the night layup, and Northern Iowa wants a timeout as Ben Jacobson doesn't like what he sees. A minute 35 to go in the half. Feeds him high-low. And Knight, who leads the Valley in field goal percentage, gets a touch in at the rim. They're trying to attack Noah Carter and get, pick up a foul on him. You've been reading some Dr. Seuss, I think. I like that, Kevin. That's, that's very nice. A minute 20 to go here in Cedar Falls. First half tied at 44. Our first tie of the day. Bourne rolling in. Got it high off the window. What a shot. He's 5'11", and he attacked Chris Knight. Got it up high and dropped it through. He plays beyond his years. Second-year freshman out of Norwalk, Iowa. Ball tried to feed it inside and off the shoe of Carter out of bounds. 14 on the shot clock. They're trying to get Knight on a mismatch inside play. They're getting a the ball screen. That time he had Burhau buried but they couldn't get the ball to him. 20 on the shot clock, 54 seconds, game clock. Williamson back on the floor for the Ramblers. Here's Schwieger going to work on the baseline. Oh, they're going to call Carter for the over-the-back foul. And Schwieger will head to the line. He thought he had all ball. Well, this is an ISO play. They got bored on the switch. Schwieger with some size. Carter comes from behind. Well, I don't know that Carter doesn't have a good argument. Pretty clean from our review. The first half for Schwieger. Perfect at the line, perfect at the field. He's hit all of his field goal attempts four for four. At the defensive end, they've been guarding Pickford with Knight, and Knight is zoning up the middle. Uh, we might see Green for this last offensive possession, but Jason will keep him on the bench. 16 seconds. This is the differential between game and shot clock, Northern Iowa. 
like they're trying to clear it out for Carter. Five to shoot. Now he's looking for help. Lost his dribble. Heisey a long way from the hoop. Better hurry up. Throws up a prayer off the rim. And here comes Loyola with a chance to lead at halftime. Fraction possession by the Panthers. Five on the clock. Ukwok spins, floats it up, banks it, and it doesn't go down. Out of bounds, and Northern Iowa will have it with 0.2 seconds left. There's not much the Panthers can do here. We're going to halftime. 46 apiece in a game that's going to decide the regular season championship in the Missouri Valley Conference. Loyola down 11 at one point, comes back. Also available on a biscuit at breakfast at participating U.S. Wendy's. Regular season championship on the line here in the Missouri Valley and also seeding for the Valley Tournament at stake. Well, Drake wins at home over Southern. Missouri State wins at Evansville. Here's the strange quirk. If Loyola loses, they, they'll be the four seed. They win, they're the one seed, obviously. And the Panthers, they're the one seed with a win, a two seed with a loss. Well, that's an early foul that's going to go against Loyola. Chris Knight picking up his second foul. A.J. Green scored the first seven points or seven of the first nine for Northern Iowa, then got those two early fouls. It sat a large portion of the first half. He's back on the floor now for the Panthers. Here's Carter, had 19 in the first 20 minutes. Lucas Williamson holding his ground against Carter on the post. Williamson the guard on the perimeter and guard. Biggs in the block. Williamson, a little out of control, but banks it in. He was trying to pass that tonight on the roll. The gap closed. Williamson kisses off the window. That's a big time shot. Their leading scorer averages 14. He's got 13 in this one. Nate Heisey, five in the first half. It's back in the hands of Carter. Guarded by the best defender in this league, Lucas Williamson. And Williamson really stood his ground. That's twice Williamson has won the battle with Carter to start this half. Now on the other side, Trey Burhau getting in the passing lane. Good swim move. Ground knocked it loose. Green and half, halfway down and it spun out. This game has become very physical here in the second half, and that's what Ben Jacobson said, we have to match the physicality of Loyola. And now Williamson will get a trip to the line. Well, our Sunday afternoon AAC basketball doubleheader on ESPN at 1230 Eastern as a matchup between the top teams in the league. Number 14, Houston hosting SMU, then Wichita State squaring up against Penny Hardaway and Memphis. Two important road to champ week games presented by Wendy's. Another one of those teams on the bubble as Hardaway has them playing well. They won seven of their last eight a win at Houston. Well, Loyola has not missed a free throw yet today. Perfect eight for eight. And they've got the lead 50 to 46. They trailed almost the entire first half. And then Schwiger came to the answer offensively for well, the Ramblers kept them close and now they were able to take a lead. Eleven to two run for Loyola going back to the first half. The Panthers trying to put an end to it. And guess who does it? AJ Green. He makes contested threes as well as any player in the nation. Traveling. Watch how deep this one is, Clay. He backs Tate Hall up just enough, and then splashes it through. Look at the rhythm, the finish. And you've talked about that high release many times this year. It is so hard to defend. 
And the story is this dead Kyle. As a youngster said, you've got to get it up higher. Despite him, he puts it way back over his head. Pickford with a big finish for the Panthers. Northern Iowa back in front by one. Talked to Ben Jacobson about Carter's first game against Loyola. He said, you know, it's just a bad game. Guys just occasionally will have an off day. Totally did not expect that to repeat itself today. Well, he said, look at Drake. He didn't score well against Drake in the first game. Came back with a huge night, 23 points against the Bulldogs in the overtime win at the Knapp Center. A couple of quick fouls against the Ramblers as Hall picks up his second moments ago. And now Schwieger has two. Turnover for A.J. Green. He was trying to set up Isaac. Norris takes it away and now feeds Schwieger in free flight. And Loyola's back on top. Great Norris understands space and pace as well as any guard I've seen. Great rhythm to him. And another Loyola foul. And again, it's on Schwieger. He's got three and he's going to have to go to the bench. Well, Norris gets the steal, but here's the finish. Schwieger outruns him. He is just a man possessed here today, especially after you take into account what he did a couple of weeks ago at Loyola. Very disappointing performance. He has brought his A game for what will decide the conference regular season championship. Two points in that game by Noah Carter. It's out of bounds, and it will go to Loyola. A fight back in the game. For Northern Iowa, his first appearance here in the second half. Let's see if they go to him down the block. He's been highly efficient. Austin Fife, short minutes. Crowd wanted a traveling call on Hall. Won't get it. And Williamson forces up a shot in traffic and draws the foul. That is one of Lucas Williamson's signature moves. It's a kick out. He likes to drive left and get all the way to the rim. He's able to get in those gaps. Draw the contact. And now back at the free throw line. I think the crowd had an argument. Call the travel. I think it was a late whistle. He got bumped early, which caused the travel. Oh, and Hall's travel? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Thought he got away with one. the biggest lead for Loyola. Four-point advantage on the road. In the first half, they're down 11, and they just kept hanging around. There's Fife on the feed from Green. And Austin Fife has a chance at three. Middle ball screen. Green turns the corner. Two defenders. Wells tries to wall up. Fife Rip runs, look at those soft hands by the big man. 6'9, Austin awesome fight. Catch with a soft finish over the rim. You were telling me something before the game about Austin that he wears his dad's number 50. His dad, Steve, 
played here at Northern Iowa. Uh, he, he's almost caught up to his dad's point total in his career, is that right? He entered this game needing 10 to tie Pops. <laughs> Dad's not gonna be rooting against his son, is he? No way. Take a shoot. Norris gets it back on the perimeter. Hall for a wide open Welch. Bang! Boy, this team can shoot from outside. That puts a stone in your oatmeal in the sky report when Welch knocks a three in. Only his fourth of the season. Five! Again, going back to the line for a three point opportunity. Well, the big man, Austin Fife. Again, gets a little space on the screen, rolling. The left hander kisses it off the window. Now he only needs six more points to tie his father, Steve. Well, she's going to sit down after picking up that foul. Five grinning ear to ear. And the biggest question with him is. How much wind can he keep in his lungs uh, because he's had a hard time keeping his breath recovering from COVID? Yeah, affects the long haul COVID. That's why he went through the senior ceremony today. Austin Fife, he's not sure if he can come back next year. He has an extra year if he wants it. But he's going to visit with the medical personnel when the season ends and see what the prognosis is for another season. Hudson back in with Welch out. Three fouls for Welch. There's a foul on Bourne. Now, Bourne understands you cannot go below ball screens on Great Norris or he will light you up. Bourne trying to go with the top contact with the screener. And called for the travel. A battle of two big bodies inside. Fife won that battle. Off the turnover. Loyola has numbers. They're trapping green of the ball screens with active hands. Comes out to Green. We have some face guarding Green. Teams have gone cold the last couple of trips. Ugwak gets it to bounce down. First three for a here, Ugwak. He passed up the three in the previous possession, that time in transition. Ugwak, who hit three threes in the game in Chicago. But Green, if he gets lathered up, look out. And a timeout. 13 14 to go. Northern Iowa taking a break. Down three in this conference. Three and three, so they're five and five in the squad one quad two games. Even Lenardi's even said if they lose today, he still has them in his tournament. Williamson to Ugwak. Second straight three for a here Ugwak. He had a huge game that first win. 18 points for Williamson, but Ugwak had 17 of his own. Bourne, an extra pass to Pickford, finds Carter. And now Northern Iowa down six. As Loyola once trailed by 11 in this game. Chris Knight finds Clemens for three. Yes! Another three for Loyola. That's their 12th of the day. Great with the double team Knight. You cannot leave Clemens open on the perimeter. He is a three point sniper. And 
Norris tank for the personal foul. His first. Keith Clemens plays limited minutes because of the arthritic knee, but when he's in, he is effective. He's been knocking in threes at a clip of 46%. Green left it. Clemens needed to pay. With a nine-point lead, Williamson's going to take this opportunity to get a rest for Loyola. They're going to need him down the stretch here. As Bourne hits the free throw, there's another one coming. There you see Drew Valentine, youngest head coach in the country at 30. Always knew he was going to be a head coach, and it was going to happen fast. Great mentors. His time at Oakland with Greg Campy. GA at Michigan State when his brother Denzel was playing. Now, do you see that Michigan State defense, the physical defense that he brought from Tom Izzo, this Loyola team? Shooting the lights out here in the second half. Five of six from three since halftime. Ubuak goes up high, keeps it alive. Morris battling Bourne. And Green got clubbed going up for that rebound. And he will shoot when we come back. 69-62 shooting numbers just outstanding here in this ball game 12 of 19 now Ryan Schwieger who has been so good from outside the arc does have four fouls and how much we're gonna see of him in the next several minutes uh, is a matter of a question but Northern Iowa has not been able to uh, defend the arc very well in this game as Green gets the free throws to make it a five-point difference. Well, Royal is so good with that inside game of Knight and Welch and Hudson that you have to honor that and they've been able to spray it outside for those open threes. Here's Norris, takes it into the paint. Falling away. Good touch, Brayton Norris. Clay, I've been to their practice. They work on that move all the time. The pivot in the middle of the lane, the step back. They call it the Nova move. Jay Wright. Trying to win their fourth Valley regular season title in the last five years. It will be their last in this conference. They're headed to the A-10 next year. On the back side, out of bounds, and we got a foul. Pickford trying to sneak in to get that extra opportunity. Goes over the back of Williamson. They need to get something out of Burhout. He has been quiet throughout this game. Yeah, he averages double figures for Northern Iowa. Ten points. Absolutely quiet in this one. Burhout has not scored. Hustle. 50 50 balls. Well, it was one of them. That was one of your keys at the beginning of this game. You know, with championships, you got to get the 50 50 balls. Good shot, fake. Good block, spinning. Wide open look. But can't get it to bounce down. In the second half, Royal has taken away. Iowa's transition game. Yes, they have. There's a foul on Williamson. Third for Lucas Williamson as Tate Hall is going to come back in for Clemens. So now you've got Williamson with three, Schwieger with four. And the, one of the best foul shooting teams in this conference is going to be at the line the rest of the game. Coming up at 8 Eastern, 7 Central over on ESPN. Number 10, Baylor hosting Kansas. We cap our six-pack of games with number one, Gonzaga. And number 23, St. Mary's. It's always a good game in the West Coast Conference. As A.J. Green, 91% of the strike hits them both. 
back to a five-point game. He's now made 47 free throws in a row. Here comes that crowd again. Chris Knight can't quiet him. Here come the Panthers trying to make a push. Green probing, throws it up. Just muscled his way in there. He was going to get a shot off or get to the line or maybe both. He ends up at the foul strike. Grace, the contact, the step through. Tate Hall trying to defend. Not want to put number four at the free throw line. Said it before, Kevin, that you know, this team was so different last year when he was unable to play. Valley Player of the Year two years ago. Do you see him potentially coming back to Northern Iowa? The discussion that he had with Coach Jake was, let's see how it goes. I knew I would jinx him on that free yeah, throw, and I did. <laughs> so he's going to get the NBA evaluation, A.J. Green, after the season, and based on what he hears from the NBA scouts, he'll make a decision. Last year he was injured, couldn't do it. Two years ago he had, because of COVID, they shut down those tryouts. Well, that is the plan going forward for A.J. Green. Well, A.J. Green, 17 points on 4 of 10. 8 of 9 at the line. The Royal has taken away the transition game of Golden Iron in the second half because they've been shooting such a high percentage. Tough to run, taking the ball out of the net. Now, Williamson fouled. And he's going to get three foul shots as Nate Heisey regrets that decision. Heisey trying to get through that screen. He trips. Oh, it really wasn't his fault. Yes. He was kind of tripped up. That was the old the close the gate play. The picket fence the Hoosiers that they ran to get Williamson the three ball. counted 150 upsets that Drew Valentine has in his arsenal. One of the better crowds in a long time at the McLeod Center. So much on the line for this one. 6,400 plus on the cloud today. Williamson gets two of three at the line. 73-67, Loyola, the defending champs in the regular season. Hoping to be the one seed for the conference tournament, which they won last year. Under nine minutes to go. Green forced that pass, and Loyola picked it off. Great defense by Earl. Williamson ran at him. Rotation to the backside. Slotted out of there by Bowen Bourne, who's five foot eleven, but looked like he was seven feet tall on that play. Norris refuses the screen. Bourne with great timing as he's caught from behind. Line. And Loyola gives another one away. That's their 12th turnover in this one. And this is a great one-on-one -on -one battle. We talk about Williamson on green, Bourne on Norse. They are going at it like two heavyweight fighters. Carter posting up. And he'll go to the line. No Carter has been neutralized a little bit here in the second half, but he'll get a chance at the strike. Now, did Norris step out of bounds? I don't know. I don't think that heel came down, Clay. Roland Simmons, Kevin Driver, Dave Cusick are officiating crew today. At that time, they got the switch course on Carter. Got the shot up before the double arrived. Welch is going to come back into the game. Number 10 for Loyola with three personals. Tate Hall also with three. 
Schwieger with four. And we talked about Williamson. He's also in a little bit of foul trouble with three of his own. Clemens back into Royal to the three-point sniper. That's a reach-in foul on Carter. That's the eighth team foul on Northern Iowa. So. 73-69 as Welch comes up to the line. You have, your car, you have to pass that one. You cannot foul Welch 25 feet from the hoop. It paid off. The uncharted turnover the missed on the front end of a one-on-one. Carter on a mismatch with Clemens, but he tried to beat a cross for Pickford. Broken up, and we've got a timeout on the floor. 7.51 to go. It's a four-point game in Cedar Falls. Net jumped to a 27 this week. Oh, Lenardi has it as a last four, and even if they would lose today, Northern Iowa, the 14th seed now, adds the automatic qualifier. So if they would lose today, they have to win the Valley Tournament to, to punch their ticket for the big games. Even if they win today, though, Kevin, I... Don't they still have to win the tournament? Yes. They're going as the number one seed. Should they win that? Or win this today? Williamson rolling around Pickford. Feeds Norris. 7.7 7 rebounds. 7 assists for Norris. Inside to Welch. And that is what the big man gives you off the bench. He has been sensational these last couple weeks Tom Welch he's 10 of 13 from the field in this game this last two games and Welch clears the rebound fans wanted a foul no whistle under seven to play Paul wide open for three and he forced it he had more time and he just rushed it the collision and now the sportsmanship this in Williamson picks board up off the floor. Now this second half has been Loyola's pace of play. First half was the Panthers, and it was 46-46. It's slowed down considerably here in the second half. Yeah. Another great bullet pass from Carter. He has a chance at a three-point play. The back cut ninja, number two, Garrett Sturts from Drake had that title, but I'm going to rename Heisey the back cut ninja. He gets at least one every game. We've seen Carter with a couple of pretty dimes here today. Northern Iowa within four. Twenty-two points for Lucas Williamson. He's got it now. Deep three attempt. Long shot, long rebound. Carter intercepts. He's playing like a safety on that one. Still scoreless in this game. Need a foul. Green on a back cut. Paid Hall grabs it. Carter sees this one coming. You're exactly right. He's like a safety. Great read as Norse tries to throw it up to the rim. Tate Hall just picked up another one, so he's got four. You've got four players for Loyola with four personals. Hall, Schwieger, and Welch. 13 turnovers for the Ramblers. That has been completely flipped from the first matchup between these two teams. A matchup that saw 
Northern Iowa with 12 turnovers. Just hit. Drew Valentine calls a timeout as the Panthers creep to within two. 5.57 to go. The, the players he mostly recruited. And with the transfer police, they, they could have left, but they stuck around. Trigger Knight came in as transfers. This is a team that he built as an assistant, and now as a first year head coach, he has a chance to bring home a Valley title. Chris Knight right around Carter. Carter holding his face. He thought he was fouled. He caught the elbow of Knight on his right eyebrow on the swim move by Knight. These officials have been letting him play for the most part. And now foul underneath against Heisey. And that's going to be on Knight. Watch inside now. He's going to swing around the elbow. Just barely catches Carter. Now at the other end. This game is getting physical. This is not for the weak of heart. You better put your steel-toed boots on to go play this game. 19 made free throws for Northern Iowa. 19 of 24. And it's a two-point game again. This is what we expected, Kevin. Put your seat, Belmont play. Be a great 521 left. Panthers can tie it or take the lead. Carter kept Knight, but it's getting to a sweet spot. Green taking matters into his own hand. Right over the top of Williamson. The best offensive player going against the best defensive player in the league. A.J. Green won that battle. Williamson going to the line in a tie game. Now this you cannot defend, Clay. He stands him up the spin. Williamson's got his hand right in the grill of A.J. Green. He still drops it through. There's Ben Jacobson, four times Valley Coach of the Year, trying to win the Valley regular season for the second time in three years. All lineup from Loyola as Schwiger re enters the game. Ugwak becomes their five man. Reaching foul against Carter. That'll send him to the line. And that's going to be four on Williamson. So now four players for the Ramblers, one foul away from being disqualified. done a better job limiting Carter here in the second half. He had 19 at the break. He's got 21 now, but still he can make an impact here late. They put different defenders on. Luke Walk has been dashed up at times. Now Lucas Williamson is going to the bench. A short rest. Posts up on Carter. Clemens. Still plenty of time to shoot. Norris. Hoists a three. Yes! Braden Norris with ice in his veins. You cannot blow the screen or give him space. Norris. The pit bull. Green tries to answer back. 
Norris wants to push. Norris doesn't take a ton of threes, but he's very efficient. Doesn't get it that time. Born. Can't get it to go down, but he'll be at the line. Three thirty-two to go. Thursday. Three thirty-two left. A three-point game. As you can see today, Missouri State a winner. Drake a winner. How good is Bowen born bit this year? Broken finger to start the season. Developed shin splints. He's got healthy in January, and the offense for the Panthers took a huge step forward. Loyola by one. They've got two timeouts remaining, so does Northern Iowa. Williamson. Pass gets away. Who's got it? It's going to stay with Loyola. 13 seconds on the shot clock. Panthers with their best defender, Pickford on Williamson. Just love the effort from Carter today. They did the cheerleaders. This would have been a great matchup between Thorne and Norris. Swings out for Norris. Great effort by Pickford. To knock that rebound loose. Pickford's not being guarded. They put Ukwok on green. Look at Williamson and Carter. Warren, another trip to the line for their second year freshman. He came to this game with two great games previous to this 17 against Missouri State, 13 against Indiana State. Now, his dad is a scout for the Pacers. He asked his father to give him an NBA evaluation of his game. What do you tell him? Too small. <laughs> Can't do much about that. 5'11, but he plays much bigger. He's perfect at the foul line. He's got 15 points. And Northern Iowa's back in front. doing a good job on Williamson. Night on A.J. Green. Green passes out of that double team. Got it back. Shot clock. Green. Tough to defend. Over the top of the backboard. Well, what they're doing now is they're doubling Green. Now he splits it. Pickford is not being guarded, so he's back in that area we call the dunker zone behind the board. Knight with an outstanding recovery. And Drew Valentine wants to use one of his two timeouts remaining with a minute 54 to play. Born as Born has 15. And Loyola had a barrage of threes, Clay. They got 13 for the game, but they have not been able to get one down here of late. They're trying to go to night inside. Williamson lost it. Knight trying to get it back. That's tied up. Jump ball in the possession era will keep it on this end. Another 50-50 ball. The Ramblers able to secure it. They're trying to run that middle ball screen and get a lob tonight at the rim. Great success the first time these teams played with that particular play, but Ben Jinx have made some adjustments. Middle lane has been clogged for the Ramblers. Williams 
Thompson lobs it up. Knight adjusts, gets it to go, and one. What a play for the transfer, Chris Knight. Well, they came back to the same action play that they tried the first time. Knight got the tied ball. It's the lob up there, running really Knight to the rim. Great catch. He has such power inside. Chris Knight. Big three-point play for Chris Knight, who gave the Panthers trouble in the post the last time they met, and he puts Loyola back in front by a deuce. But think how they got that. He got on the ground for that 50-50 ball, gave them the extra possession, and Knight makes the pay. A.J. Green has got 14 in the second half. Drives. Looking to draw the contact, and he'll get back to the line. Well, Golden Many Iowa keeps trying to get a switch with Knight on Green. That time, Knight fouled him. That's five on Knight. He's done. Uh, Chris Knight is going to sit down for the rest of this game, but he just moments ago had a three-point play to give Loyola the lead back. As Green comes to the line. The biggest play of the game on that last possession thus far now, Green. Many of his points here in the second half have come at the strike. He's 11 of 12 at the line. I didn't want to say anything because the last time I put the jinx yeah. on A.J. Green. Right here in Cedar Falls, the pride of this town. He's been so good. Chance he'll be player of the year again in the Missouri Valley. And once again, we are tied. Norris to try to get the shots for the Ramblers. Green's day, 23 points, 12 at the free throw line. Under a minute in regulation. And Williamson is fouled a long way away from the hoop by Nate Heising. Well, they got five perimeter players out to Florida. They lifted up off the baseline and gave Lucas Williamson the angle to drive and draw the contact. And that's five for Heisey, so he's out. They've used Heisey for most of this game to guard Lucas Williamson. Now Pickford back in will have that assignment. Do you like that foul by Heisey there? I like the play that Drew Valentine ran because he lifted everybody up and gave that was a complete clear out play for Williamson to get the drive, the bucket, or the free throws. Nine points for Heisey. Second year freshman from Lake City, Minnesota. He's been a starter, the Lions share of the year. Williamson gets them both. 26 points for Lucas Williamson. Lead is two, 50 seconds to go. Trying to get, they got the switch they wanted. It's gonna be one on one for Green. In and out. And it'll stay with Northern Iowa. Well, that was halfway down the cylinder, and the rim just coughed it back up. They got the switch, they got Swigger on to Green, so he's one on one. Most important now, Clay, you have to inbound it cleanly. Pickford does, gets it to Burhau, who's watched there by Schwieger, who's playing with four fouls. This is what they wanted. Green's got it, drives, leans into Schwieger, got it, and one. That is a veteran play by A.J. Green. 
Uh, and a veteran call by Ben Jacobson. He got the switch. Two block off. Swigger on. The upper body strength. And that's what A.J. Green did this offseason. Increased his upper body strength for plays like this. Missed the free throw, and we stay tied. Shot clock is off. And Loyola wants to use its last timeout with 23 seconds to go. Well, it's not many games where it's left. Northern Iowa has one timeout remaining. Pickford is going to be fast on Lucas Williamson. Will Block trying to get it to his point guard. Braden Norris has it. Ten seconds to go in regulation. Williamson backs up for the lead. Ubuak, no, and we're going to overtime. Going to overtime to decide the ballot. Eight Paul, Norris, and Welch. No well, no one else with more than three for you and I. And Welch is going to jump center in the absence of Knight. And here come the Panthers. Carter. Quickly cut off by Hall. And ben Jacobson trying to start the offense with Green. And he's fouled by Ugwa. So A.J. Green, who missed that free throw at the end of regulation, goes back to the line. Um, so best, the best, best free throw shooter in the Valley. 95% come this game in league play for A.J. Green. This will be the 36th free throw attempt by the Panthers. And they've made 30 of them. It's been a great matchup here between Great Norse and Bowen Bourne. Those two have gone to war this entire second half. Three for Norris. Loyola leads. You cannot go behind the ball screen. And remember, Great Norse, two overtime game against Balfour. He knocked in five triples in those two overtimes. Answering back is Green. Match inside. Paul oh, well defended. Norris again for three. Not this time. Still belongs to Loyola. That shot clock went off in an error. The shot was already taken. Ugwak in and out. Welch keeps it alive. drives doesn't get the bounce three opportunities for the Ramblers to score on that possession still nothing on the scoreboard today for Burhau a board trying to go to the top of these screens he got hung up last time. Norris three assists away from a triple double. He's already got his first career double double. Into the backcourt. That is a shot clock violation this time. Great defense by you and I. That's four stops in a row for the Panthers. 
because of the consistency. And Drew Valentine, and this is the team that and program we respect at the utmost. Look at that freshman, Bowen Bourne, probing, working that defense, floating it up, and got it. He plays like a fifth-year senior. Well, he grew up in Portland with the Trailblazers in their practice facility as his dad was a scout in Portland. And this has been a great matchup between Bourne and Great Norse. Turnover. And Bourne's got 17, and he had to work for this one. with an illegal screen on Pickford. He tries to come over the top. The 15th turnover for the Ramblers. This is a big trip. And Ben Jacobson wants to burn his last timeout. Loyola still has a timeout in their pocket with 1.40 to go in the overtime. So you've got Northern Iowa with a four-point they're trying to leave this conference with another regular season title. It would be their fourth in the last five years. Out of bounds play on the side. Pickford will trigger. Williamson on green. Williamson's got four fouls. Double team, bad pass, trying to get it to Carter. Here comes Norris, and Pickford takes it away. The biggest steal of that super senior's career. Now what they're doing is trapping A.J. Green on the ball screens. A minute to go. No timeouts for Northern Iowa. Deep three, four. <laughs> Seven ninety. They're resetting the clock to fifty three seconds as the ball got away after that big hoop. Twenty points for Bourne, and it's a seven point difference now. 53 seconds to go. Loyola has one timeout left. Williamson. Yes! The veteran keeping Loyola's hopes alive here late. Huge shot by Lucas Williamson. Lifts off the left side. In 146 games, he's had a Final Four and a Sweet 16 on his resume. Full court pressure here by Loyola. Burhau trying to break that press, and it's fouled from behind by T.Y. Johnson, who comes in as a def defensive specialist here in the final minute. Burhau has not scored in this game. Goes to the free throw line for two. as soon as we're done here in Cedar Falls. Burhau again played one year at Pepperdine. He's had four productive years at Northern Iowa since the transfer. Gets them both. This is why he came back, Clay. He came back for that extra COVID year. Pickford and Burhau. Lead is six. Hall needs this one. Got it from the corner. Loyola down three with 27 seconds to go. Right, Loyola keeps hitting threes and keeps sending Northern Iowa to the foul line. Great job of extending the game. They're trading threes for twos. Who's from the free throw line? Well, I think Drew Valentine would have said, you know, if you give us 53% from outside the arc, 16 threes, 
and we would hit 90% of our foul shots. I'm going to like our chances, but they very well may lose today despite those numbers. If you're Northern Iowa, this defensive possession, you have to take away the threes. Give up the two. Do not give up a three. Early, they went to get to the rim quick and set up the press. 101 96. Norris can't get the roll. Carter's got it. can make this a three possession game with a couple of foul shots. Jason and his skull session this morning on the board. Carter wrote 100 points today. Tipped up by Clemens. No, Carter. Another rebound. That's going to do it. 